Hey everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. Looking at one of the last saws that I picked up on that trip up north. Oh, in the spring. Uh, trying to get my viewfinder to work right here and it's... There we go. Uh, it's doing something that I really want to document. Uh, because a lot of you guys could run across this. It runs... But it doesn't run right. I want you guys to hear it, and then we're going to start diagnosing it. Ugh. Rather, it didn't do that. problem. Did you guys hear that popping and banging and everything else? There's an ignition problem in this saw. And with where it's cutting in and out at, the RPM level, I'm going to take a wild guess that it's got a condenser that's going oh, bad. But we'll have to get it apart to know for certain. That's a fairly new spark plug, an NGK. Just for grins, let's throw a tester on here and let's see, see what she's doing. You guys will be able to see that. It's a little bit intermittent there. It's hard to say, we may have a points issue in here too, but so many times folks will get going on one of these things and really just focus on the carburetor because it has spark. Well, just because it has visible spark on a spark plug, unfortunately, that's not necessarily the end of the story. There can still be more to it than that. I don't like the feel of this one. Wow. I guess it's coming loose, but whoo! I don't like them that time. I guess it was locked tight. Okay. Now I had good reason to believe it was points ignition simply because it's a 1977 model. So, the next test I'm going to do will seem a little bit silly to you, but I want to spin it over in my, with my drill. Because I know roughly how many RPM the drill is turning normally when I get spark in one of these tests. I just know. So I'll turn this so you guys can see. So we'll get this mounted here. Shoot. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. You know, everything's harder on video. All right. That's close. I'd be real tempted to ignore that if I was just doing some testing. That's an honest statement, I would. But hearing how it was running, something was not right in it. So let's figure it out. The 
we'll get this open. First thing, oh, let's try not to do that. Uh, we'll try to get under the hood, so to speak, and check the points themselves. Just see if there's something obvious there that doesn't qu look quite right. But I've replaced quite a few condensers over the years that the engine would run and sound eerily similar to what this thing was doing. So that's why the minute I heard it, I stopped, got the camera going, and said, "Hey, let's let's document this." So if I'm if I'm correct this time around, you guys will have a little more ammo as you're working with these things. So it's not totally filthy under there, at least not to our, to what we can see right now. I mean, I've sure as hell seen a whole lot worse than that. This is downright clean in comparison to most of what I see. So that's good, I think. So the points are a little bit dirty. Pardon that real noise in the background. Of course, a street sweeper would come by while I'm doing this. All right, I can't do a whole lot better than that. Uh, but there's some debris kind of built up around the points here. Some blackish looking stuff. So. Yeah, I think we'll want to clean those up, regardless. That's just a given. And since I want to test the condenser, I'm going to go ahead and take the points out. Because they're a hell of a lot easier to clean up out of the saw than they are in. If it was just a matter of cleaning the contacts with some Electrical cleaner, that'd be fine. Just open them up, spray them out, call it good. But I'll take a closer look because I don't want to tear this saw apart twice. It's not my idea of fun. Do it once, do it right, and be done with it. All right. Taking the points out, you can make your life a little bit easier. You can take that block out. You know, loosen this nut a little bit so it's not got any tension on it. There we go. Points that'll just pop out with it. And that'll make it easier to get this little nut and lock washer off. And in theory, not do what I just did. I got lucky it landed where I can see it. That's the whole point. You don't want to keep doing what I keep doing, which is losing little items. I'm getting lucky here, but damn. I'm mean, Captain Butterfingers before it's all said and done. Okay. Here's a close-up of the points. They're not bad, but all that build up a crud right there. I mean, it's like grease. I don't don't know why it's there, but I'm gonna clean these up thoroughly. Oh yeah, that's all it is. Those contacts look great. They don't need filed. At least I don't think they do. Alright, so I'm going to unwrap the wire and we're going to test this. Now, 
I've talked on the channel before about meters that read microfarads, farads, farads, however the hell you pronounce it, I don't know. I just know that this flute meter will read it. So let's see, you've got to have your condenser disconnected to do this. Now, oh, I'm doing this bass backwards. Not that I think it matters a hell of a lot. <laughs> All right, I guessed right. So that is reading 262. The way the home light book shows it, uh, you need a value of 0.16 to 0.20 on these condensers. This would be a 0 0.260. So it's out of range. That condenser is getting weak. And that is why she's a popping and a banging like that. Because it doesn't have enough. It's not. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to describe this and not completely screwed up because I'm not an electrician and I don't know electrical theory all that well but the condenser as i recall almost focuses the spark to the right frequency and intensity for the coil or focuses the signal from the points so that it's at the right frequency and level for the coil again i'm probably screwing that up a bit and somebody who is an electrician or studies electronics would be able to explain it better but when a condenser starts to break down, it gets out of range. And you don't get as good a spark. And that appears to be what we have here. So the reason it'll idle is it takes less voltage and less intense spark at idle because you're burning less fuel. When you get up on the top end, you're burning more fuel. You need a hotter spark to burn it all. Now this doesn't have the telltale signs of being swollen on the end, but I am 98% certain that this is going to run right when we put this back together. saw how it was wrapped prior. I'm going to do something similar. That way we don't accidentally someday suck the wiring up into the flywheel. The magnet doesn't grab a hold of it and say, hey, let me chew that up for lunch, because you don't want that. All right, I'm going to see how bumbling I can be here. Get these points cleaned off completely. Got those almost look like newer points. So your screw goes in through the point strap, through the back, this little block. In this case, there was a flat washer there. I've seen them without. Don't lose any sleep if there's not one there. Okay, I'm trying to hold that screw in place, and for some reason it's being a poo. Okay. If you get through this without dropping these little nuts and washers and stuff at least once, you're doing really good. All right, that's started. Let's go ahead and slip this back into place. Swung around. There we go. Okay, I dropped in. Let's see if I can get this point screw started without too much. So then the screwdriver is magnetized, except when I want it to be. So when I don't want a screw down. Fly opener in the cylinder fins. All right. 
I'm not going to play nice. We'll do it like that. Center. And we're close. Points should be set at 0.015. That is cast right in the bracket here. Done this a couple, three too many times. Points closed, points open. All right. What the hell? Fuel cap. Give me a second to blow this thing out. back together and before we ever even put the starter on we're gonna roll it over with the drill again and just see if anything looks a little better. I uh, left it right there. Come on. It's not convenient when the magnet's grabbing the coil as you're trying to drop it down. It doesn't work well. Okay that washer yeah. I've certainly seen better days. It would appear that there was a lock washer missing. I'm not a huge no, fan of that. flywheel coming loose. There's never any good that comes of that. There. Much better, I hope. Okay. Gonna be a tough angle, but that's the best view of the spark again. Yeah, consistent it is at such a low speed. Gives you an idea of what it should look like. We were nowhere close to that before. And again, it's deceiving as hell because if you had just put a spark plug in there and <laughs> yep, it'll spark, and it will, but it's not enough to have run right. So, let's throw this back together the rest of the way real quick, and we'll do a test run. She's going to sound a whole lot better. You know, this flywheel screen is easy to say, ah, oh, it's not that important. But if you've got a Super XL style saw, 925, well, actually it would be the 700s, the earlier ones that don't have a grill on the starter. If you've got that style of saw and you don't have a screen in place and a stick comes up through and gets in the flywheel, guess what's going to happen? And they can, and they do.
means you're going to be replacing your flywheel. Which right now, there's still used flywheels out there all over the place. 10 years from now, 20 years from now, are there going to be? I don't know. Well, that wasn't easy. I'll tell you this much, every year I buy less parts. And it's not because I'm looking for less parts. It's because there's less parts for sale. Still a lot of used saws. But new old stock parts, they are not nearly as plentiful as they were. And that makes sense. Now I know what the goop was. GB weld and a stripped out hole. Well, I can deal with that later. We can still do our test run. Cross your fingers, folks. saw is not done by any stretch of the imagination. I still need to go through everything, clean her up and all that, but that popping from the ignition is long gone. Coil, or ah, condenser was out of range. So now you guys have something else that you can look for on these as you're diagnosing a weird issue like that. Start looking at the condenser really close.